For Andre, it was the hardest of goodbyes. I love you, he tells his daughters as he prepares to swim for his life. Papa, yeah. Is daddy leaving? asks one. Yes, he replies. The young doctor from southern Belarus had just driven his family across the country from their home near the Ukrainian border. Andre then swam into the safety of neighboring Lithuania, running from a war that wasn't his. <laughs> Fleeing with x-rays of some of the Russian soldiers he treated as the war began. The ghosts of Vladimir Putin's war machine. <laughs> I wanted to tell their stories. I just took some evidence to confirm it. What I took with me could make me liable. They can charge me with espionage. With the state of the Russian army, its defeats and its casualties, a closely guarded secret, these images are a rare window onto Russia's catastrophic invasion. On February 24th, the first day of the war, Russian forces landed at this airport on the outskirts of Kyiv. The fight that ensued was brutal. Ukrainian counteroffensives inflicted devastating casualties on the Russian paratroopers. Many wound up in Mosir City Hospital in southern Belarus. Most had blast injuries, injured hips, face, lacerations to the torso area, head, brain injuries. Several had damage to their jaws. Andre says that many of the injuries he treated were consistent with soldiers coming under unexpected and chaotic firepower. They saw a lot of explosions and couldn't even see who was firing on them. Some of them told us they'd gone through hell. They didn't expect what was waiting for them in Ukraine. They thought they were going in for military exercises. They were mainly angry at the commander who had deceived them. Most already were resigned to their new reality, losing a finger or a leg. The trucks used to transport the wounded shared at the time on social media. Andre says they arrived at night, bringing 30 soldiers on the second day of the war, 90 on the third. They came from Borodyanka, some from Hostomel and others from Bucha. A number was written on the forehead of each to direct them to the right department. At least the ones who were admitted had a good chance of surviving. There was one guy who was missing his entire lower jaw and he was only complaining that he hadn't eaten or drank anything for three days. But the soldiers kept arriving. Andre says about 40 a day on average. The wounds easier for him to remember than the names, although one in particular does stand out. One of the early narratives of the start of the war was the number of commanders that were being lost on the Russian side. Several wound up in Moser District Hospital, including General Sergei Nirkov. He suffered abdominal trauma from a mine explosion in Chernobyl. So we treated him, and then after he was stabilized, he was taken away with the other officers. I felt disgust towards these officers. Mainly the feeling was that they were war criminals. Mostly, Andre says, the men were ordinary soldiers, very young and inexperienced. 18, 19, 20-year-olds who would spend a couple of days in his hospital before being sent back to Russia. Their lives saved, but changed forever. I had the impression that only a small portion of the soldiers sent actually made it out alive and to our hospital. I had a feeling that some of the living envied those who had died. Andre is now rebuilding his own life with his family in a European city with what little they could bring, mainly the x-rays, hidden in one of his daughter's toys to be brought to safety and now to light. Melissa Bell, CNN, London.